guys, it's Courtney. Today I'm going to be creating a one layer card using the Swinging By stamp set by Neat and Tangled. And I'm going to try to do my entire background with Copic markers, kind of freehand everything, which I'm new at, but I'm kind of experimenting. So I brought out my Misty just in case I have to stamp this image twice, which I did. And I'm stamping with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 onto a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock cut down to 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. And we're going to jump right into the Copic markers because, like I said, the whole thing is Copics. So I'm starting out by kind of mapping out where my my ground will begin where my sky will begin and I'm using a really light green this is the G20 and I'm just using my grid mat just to make sure it's somewhat straight I didn't bother to pull out my ruler or anything because it doesn't have to be perfect and this is just a guide at this point so I wanted to create some trees for my little scene here and these are not going to be realistic guys this is the first time I'm trying this so it's a whimsical card. I figured this is the great a great time to try it because it doesn't matter if they're realistic or not. They're not supposed to be. So I am starting off with my E70, which is the lightest color for the tree itself. And I'm just kind of drawing a basic shape of a tree with the branches. And once I was happy with the placement of the branches, I'll go back in and kind of thicken up those branches, especially towards the part where they meet another branch and it will kind of get skinnier as you get towards the end. Once I was happy with the placement of those branches, I decided to add another tree off to the right hand side, but put this one kind of further back in the background. So it'll be a little bit smaller, but I'm basically doing the same thing, just kind of basic shape of a tree with some branches, uh, thinner as the branches kind of move away from themselves. Next I'm going to go in with the E79 and I'm just going to be adding some shadows here. So I'm going to add the shadows to the left hand side of this tree here because it is kind of hanging off the page a little bit thicker towards the bottom of the tree trunk and I did kind of go about halfway down with just some flicks just to kind of add some texture to it and for each one of the branches I'm pretty much just it's just a thin line with just the tip of my marker on the bottom part of each of the branch. Now where the little branches kind of are hanging off the larger branch, I am kind of extending that shadow a little bit as well. So it's not just one straight, one line of dark color there. I want this to kind of seem a little bit seamless, I guess. So once that was done, I'll move on to the E74, and I'm pretty much doing the same thing. I'm just extending all of these areas out. Again, on the bottom part of that tree trunk, I'm going almost all the way to the right-hand side, just leaving a very small highlight. And same thing for the branches. I'm going directly over where I put that E79 and just extending it out a little bit further, just concentrating those darkest areas being on the bottom part of the branches. I not only make the lines thicker, but sometimes I extend them to be a little bit longer as well. So you can always add more shadows with your mid-tone color. Not every shadow has to be created with your darkest color. So once I had that mid-tone down, I'll go back to that E70 and I'm just going to blend all of this out. So I'm going to go over everywhere that I had mapped out before, including directly over that E79 and E74, just to get everything to blend out. Now, the tree trunk on the one on the left looks a little bit blotchy, and sometimes it will especially when the paper is still wet, even though it appears to be dry. So before you go back in and add more color, just let it dry for a minute, see how it ends up. So I did. I went on to my leaves, or kind of leaves, I guess. So I'm going to bring back in that G20, and I'm just going to fill in around my little branches and get the basic shape of the leaves the leaf part of the tree. So I'm pretty much just drawing a circle 
around my branches and just filling in between the branches, just being careful not to go over that brown or that those E70 markers because I don't wanna drag that color out. Because this is such a light color, you will drag any darker color that you touch. So to add some texture to the leaves or to actually add the leaves, I'm gonna bring in first my G28, which is my darkest color, and I'm just adding teeny tiny dots. I'm concentrating most of my darker areas being between the branches. And then as I get to the edge of the tree, I'm still putting some of these dots, the darker color, but they're kind of spaced out more. They're more concentrated in between the branches, which would naturally be the darkest part of the leaves, or it would appear to be darker anyway. Moving on to the G46, going directly over those dots that I had created with the G28 and just extending those out a little bit further. So I'm, again, more concentration towards the branches, but kind of going out a little bit further than I did before. Same thing with the G28, going over directly those spots or dot, those dots that we had created before and working my way out a little bit further. For the G21, I basically did the same thing, but here I'm putting dots across the entire part of the tree, even concentrating on the edges of that little semicircle that we had created. Once my dots were done, I'll go ahead and bring back in my G20, and I'm not gonna be creating any more dots, but I am gonna go directly over those semi-circles or circles that we had drawn out to begin with. This will kind of make these dots blend in more together. You'll see as I go over them, they kind of mesh together, if that makes any sense. But you'll wanna be quick with it because this is such a light color. You don't wanna pick up too much of the color. You just want them to blend a little bit. So next, here's where I fix that little tree trunk, but next I'm gonna be moving on to the sky and I'm gonna try to do some clouds. Now, I don't know whether I did this right guys, but it came out okay, I guess. And I'm just starting with my C1 to kind of map out or draw in my clouds. So the larger clouds are gonna be towards the top and then as I get work towards the bottom, they're gonna get a little bit smaller. Then I'm gonna add some shading to the clouds themselves. So I'm gonna bring in my C3 and I'm just adding shading towards the bottom and I'm really not doing any flicking here. I'm just kind of going over the lines that we had created with the C1. Anytime the cloud kind of caves in on itself on the top, I did put like a little V or a little U just to add a little bit of texture. Gonna add just a teeny tiny bit of blue. So I'm bringing in it B uh, B91, which is more of a blue gray. And I'm going directly over that C3 and just making those lines just a tad bit thicker. You don't wanna add too much. You wanna still go in with a pretty light hand. Finally, I'll go back in with my C1 and I'm gonna kind of flick this color out a little bit, but I'm leaving most of my clouds still being white because clouds are white. So I wanna leave a whole lot of white space here, but I do want these colors to kind of mesh together. So I'm flicking that out with the C1 and to get rid of these flick marks, you can certainly go in with a lighter C marker, which I do not own. So in place of that, I go in with my colorless blender and just do a few quick little flicks from the opposite direction. So I'm working from the top of the cloud towards the bottom. So for the sky itself, I'm going to color in the entire thing with my B00. And you'll see that I work in sections here because this makes it easier for me. So I'm lightly going over or around each of my objects, especially the tree and the clouds. I don't want these colors to bleed together. So I'm working in little sections at a time and lightly going over around my a little elephant there and around my clouds. I'm looking for kind of jagged lines around my clouds. So it's okay if it's not perfect because you kind of want it not to be perfect. These are clouds. So I'm gonna speed everything up, but you can see as I get towards the top, I'm still working in little sections. Do what works best for you. This just happens to work best for me. But you'll see that a lot of the areas are becoming a little bit streaky because I don't have a whole lot of ink on the paper yet. And this will happen with any alcohol marker, not just Copics. So just I just go over it a second time. 
So I'm going to do the same thing, work in sections again, go in the same direction with my marker each and every time, and go over the same area twice. And this will kind of get rid of the streaks. Keep in mind that it will darken up the area a little bit, but you'll get rid of those streak lines. Going to do the same thing with the grassy area with that G20. I'm going to go over, around all of my images and really the only thing I have to go around is the elephant in the trees. But again, being careful not to touch those trees. I don't want to drag out that color. This is streaky. I don't care. I'm going to end up going over most of it anyway. Going to create a shadow for my elephant and my little girl here, starting with my darkest color. And the shadow for her will be obviously on the ground and not directly underneath her because she's supposed to be floating in air. Now I did add a few blades of grass around my trees, which I should have waited to do, but I did what I did. <laughs> so I'm doing that with my mid-tone colors as well. And then decided that it was a little too plain and I didn't want to add blades of grass throughout the entire thing. So because this is kind of like a flat ground, I guess we're looking at here, the back towards where the ground meets the sky would be darker because it's furthest away. So I'm going to do a little bit of shading here. I'm going to skip the G28 just because I felt like that was a little bit too dark. I'm going to use the G46, which I know the cap is upside down, and I do that all the time, and nobody has ever made a comment, but I do it all the time. I don't pay attention. And I'm just doing some small flick marks from the back of the grass, I guess, blending that out with the G24. Then I'll go in with the G21, being careful not to go beyond that grass. That's why I should have waited to do that grass. And then finally, I will take my G20 and I'm going to go over the entire area again. Again, being careful not to go directly over that grass or else it's no longer going to look like blades of grass. It's going to just look like a muddy mess. Next, I'm going to go ahead and color my image. <laughs> it's about time, right? So I'm going to go right in with my C7, which will be my very darkest color. Because the cool grays blend so well, I don't have a problem starting with my darkest color. Going to add a little bit of shading underneath his little chin where his his chin is hanging over his body, underneath his little arm there, off to the left hand side on the one ear that's kind of behind the other. Now there's also some lines within the illustration for where his trunk is kind of bent up towards the top. I'm going to use those lines and even create another one for myself. Also with his ear, there are some, right within the illustration, there is some detail there, and I'm going to play on that when I color as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading to the bottom part of his ear where it's kind of like a wavy line. I'm going to use that to my advantage. I am extending all of these areas out with my C5 and also adding some more shading in areas that I didn't necessarily want it to be too dark. I want to keep him pretty light. So... Typically, my highlight color will be the least amount of marker that I use or the least amount of color that I use. In this particular case, it's the most. So he's mostly going to be the C1, and everything else is strictly shadows and shading. So once I have the C7, C5, and C3 down, I'm going to go ahead and move on to that C1, and I'm going to cover the entire elephant with this. Like I said, if you have a lighter C marker, you can always preserve a little bit more of a highlight and use that, but I don't, and I didn't want to leave anything completely white. So in this case, my highlight color is pretty much the entire elephant. So once he was all colored in, I wanted to add a little bit of pink to the inside of his ears. So I'm taking the R20 marker and just adding just adding that to the inside of his ears where that little circle is, or it's almost a circle. I kind of just freehanded the rest of it. And then I quickly went over that with the C1 again, just so it's not as bright of a pink. It kind of tones it down with that gray. Next, we'll move on to this little girl. I'm going to start off with the skin tones here. And I'm only using three colors because she's pretty tiny. So my E01, just mapping out my darkest areas, which will be underneath her hair and on the left side of her face because she's kind of looking towards us. So the highlight would be on her left side of her face. 
for her little shirt there, I was going to initially use two colors and I wasn't getting enough contrast. So I started off, no, I lie, I did her hair first. <laughs> um, I'm making her a little redhead. So going right in with my darkest color and just putting some shading where her hair would be parted and where her bangs are kind of overlapping and just put a few little squiggles in her little pigtails there because she either has some messy buns going on there or she has curly hair. So I just do little squigglies with all three colors and they kind of blend well together and make it look like she's got curly hair. So now we'll move on to the shirt. And I'm starting off with my lightest color to map out the area of my darkest area and kind of get the paper saturated. When I initially went in with what was supposed to be my darkest color, I just wasn't getting the contrast that I was looking for. So I ended up bringing in another darkest dark color. The darkest areas are gonna be on the her back, I guess, and then underneath her little arm. So I brought in my RV69 and just added just a little bit of this with the tip of my marker because this is such a super dark color. I was afraid that these colors weren't going to blend, but they actually blended pretty nicely. And this did definitely give a lot more contrast. So for her little jeans there, I'm going to switch over to some B90 markers. And these are typically the markers that I will use for jeans. And again, just using three colors because super tiny area. For the leg out in front, it would the shadow would be on the bottom. And for the leg behind that one, it's pretty much going to just be dark because the other leg is going to cast a shadow. For her shoes, just using two colors here, the C7 and C5, to make these appear like she has little black shoes on with the highlight just being on the toe portion of the shoe. For the swing that she's swinging on, I wanted this to make it look like it was a wooden swing. So I'm using some E30 markers and just putting a little bit of shading underneath her and on the bottom part of the swing, blending that out with just three colors again. So now that the coloring was done, all I have to do is add the sentiment. So a couple different options you have with this stamp set. I lined everything up on my grid mat there just to make sure everything was good. Pop that onto my acrylic block. I'm going to be stamping with black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp. And I did have a scrap envelope off to the side of my desk along with everything else that I own. And I just stamped that on there just to make sure that everything was definitely straight before I stamped that onto my card. Once that was stamped out, I did adhere this to an A2 size card, and that is it. That is the card for today, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and have a great day.